Hello and welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. Volvo has released all of their information regarding their new ES90 electric sedan, the sedan version of the EX90. Let's just jump right into it. So this ES90 S4 sedan is the sedan version really of the X90 or EX90. For Volvo, right, X is for their SUVs, S is for their sedans. And so we have the EX, which is their electric 90 sized vehicle, 90 being the largest size. They also have the 60 and the 40, right, that we're familiar with. And so currently Volvo has the internal combustion engine S90. And so the ES90 is the electric version of that. I expect we could be seeing an internal combustion engine, right? New generation of the S90, kind of using some of the same platform features that we see here with the ES90, but you're not here for the internal combustion engine stuff, are you? Now, this is built on the SPA2 architecture, same architecture that the EX90 is using. So they're using a lot of the same low voltage zonal architecture when it comes to their ECUs. However, this is using an 800 volt high voltage architecture, unlike the EX90, which is using a 400 volt architecture. It is expected that the EX90 will jump to 800 volts with a refresh in the future, but the ES90 will start off from production with a 800 volt uh, high voltage architecture. Now, this is going to be available in Europe. Starting off in Europe, Volvo says there will likely broaden availability into other markets, likely speaking of China and Asian Pacific markets. Now this will be built in China, but again, it'll go to the European markets first. But if we wanna see it in the United States due to tariffs, we're likely gonna to have to see domestic production. But if they're sharing so many parts, it would make sense that they're using and sharing the same production lines. So if we do get in North America, it'll likely be produced at Volvo's South Carolina factory where they produce the Polestar 3, as well as where they make the EX90. Now there are three different powertrain performance options. This is how Volvo has done it with a lot of their other vehicles. We have a single motor rear wheel drive, which will have an 88 kilowatt hour usable, 92 kilowatt hour gross, battery with a zero to 100 kilometers an hour of 6.9 seconds. So zero to 60 is probably like 6.8. Of course, zero to 100 kilometers an hour is not exactly zero to 60. It's more like zero to 62, but estimated range of 650 kilometers, but that is WLTP. And we already know that WLTP isn't as close to real world range as you know what we would see from the EPA. And then of course, when you do actual real world range, it's uh, that's the most accurate version, but 650 kilometers, that's gonna be 403 miles for the 88 kilowatt hour smaller battery. Then there are dual motor options, what Volvo calls twin motor. So there's the twin motor all wheel drive, which has a 102 kilowatt hour, 106 kilowatt hour gross battery zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.5 seconds with a 700 WLTP range, which will be about 434 miles of range. But again, that's not EPA. So EPA likely closer to something like 410, maybe just 400 in, in terms of range, if you this was to be on the EPA test. And then you also have the twin motor performance all wheel drive, same battery, but you're getting 680 horsepower compared to 449 horsepower in the non-performance version, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in four seconds, and then the same 434 mile range. All these are expected to get a 10 to 80 time of 20 minutes. However, the single motor rear wheel drive version of the ES90 has a peak charge rate of 300 kilowatts, while the dual motors have a peak charging rate of 350 kilowatts. Now, Volvo says this 800 volt architecture has given them an improvement of charging and efficiency. And of course, as you increase the voltage, you're able to see higher peak rates of charging. There's also a heat pump, which is going to help optimize the ES90 for a lot of colder weather conditions. This vehicle is debuting in European markets in 2026. So, you know, we know how cold a lot of the northern countries get. 
Volvo is a Swedish company, of course, owned by a Chinese brand, but Volvo is a Swedish company and it gets pretty cold and sweet. So the heat pump is going to help there. This is 197 inches long, 122 inches at the wheelbase, a drag coefficient of 0.25 CD, the most aerodynamic Volvo ever. It is electric. It is a sedan. So it's going to be a lot more aerodynamic than Volvo's non-electric vehicles and all of their SUVs. However, compared to some of our other, you know, EVs out there, think the Mercedes EQS, even the Model 3, even the Ionic 6, the Model S, this isn't as aerodynamic as those. But 0.25 is still decent. Now, this does have a lift back design similar to what we see on the EQE and EQS, as well as the Model S, which just allows you to have more room in the rear. I imagine the ES90 will be competing with the likes of the EQE, the uh, Audi A6 e-tron, the BMW i5, but for many customers as well, in terms of price as well, it could be competing with the likes of the EQS of the BMW i7. It has LiDAR, five radars, seven cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors for you know the drive monitoring systems. It's the same LiDAR we see on the EX90. Like other electric Volvo vehicles, the ES90 will be capable of over the air updates. Now, when you go to cargo space, you're gonna get about 15 cubic feet of space behind the second row. But if you put that second row down, it can fold flat. You're going to get about 26 cubic feet of space. It does have a front, a front trunk, uh, but you're going to get less than a cubic feet of space there. It's a pretty small trunk, maybe a small bag, a charging cable, but nothing where you're going to put, you know, a, a large amount of items in there. Not how we see it in like the Lucid Air, which has a absolutely huge frunk or even you know something like the model s which isn't as large but still a decent frunk space i would like to see more frunks in a lot of these electric vehicles as a whole because a lot of them sedan or suv don't have frunks what do you think frunk or no frunk now we don't have official pricing from volvo volvo hasn't released that yet as production gets closer then we will see of course the ex90 right the large three row suv from volvo you know same styling it is in essence the same vehicle mm -hmm. just larger you know that starts at seventy nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars and i believe you can build that up a little bit past one hundred thousand dollars so i expect the es90 to be a little bit of the same if not a little bit less because it is a smaller vehicle of course as soon as this comes to the united states or when us at out of spec get to Europe, we will have to cover the ES90 for sure. But again, this is a sedan version of the EX90. So a lot of the features from, you know, just simple one pedal driving to its driver self autonomy driving capabilities to just the safety and driver features are already in the EX90, but this is just in sedan form. Now to end this off, I'll kind of go over the ES90 styling as a whole. I've been talking about the powertrain and specs, but in terms of styling, this thing looks, I, I want to say, really nice. It rides, it looks like it rides high, like it looks as high as a SUV, which makes me wonder how much of a platform this is sharing with the EX90, because it just looks higher off the ground than your typical sedan. As you mentioned, this is a lift back. It has these lights that are attached to the lift back. Of course, the interior is pretty reminiscent of that in the EX90, but overall, I wanna say it's a well-styled vehicle. It's gonna be interesting to see how this compares to something like the Polestar P5. Depending on pricing, this Polestar 5 is gonna be competition for the ES90. Of course, Volvo, Polestar are both owned by Geely. They're sister companies. Of course, Polestar itself was a, you know, a performance brand of Volvo and then kind of broke off into its own brand. And so they have much closer DNA than most people would think. Now, something that was also brought to me, I saw on Reddit, which I thought was kind of funny, it kind of gives you an example here, the difference between the Polestar 2 as well as the ES90. They look pretty similar, especially this front end, the design of the lights. But I learned, in fact, the Polestar 2, right, this 
smaller sedan was actually a Volvo concept vehicle at first. It was supposed to be the smaller sedan to Volvos. They have the S90. This was supposed to be like the S40 alongside the XC40, their smaller mid-sized SUV. So this would be that smaller mid-sized sedan. However, Volvo never made it. They just never came out with it. And so they gave this entire design to Volvo. And so it's just a Polestar vehicle. And so especially this front end here just looks so identical. But, you know, of course, the Pulsar 2 is smaller than that of the ES90. It is a less luxurious vehicle, has less range, less power, just less features as a whole. So these aren't going to be competing much, I imagine, at all. But this is exciting. The more EVs, the better. I say that every single episode. Let me know what you guys think of the ES90. What would you go with? You can get something as far as the Porsche Taycan. You get the Model S Plaid. You can get the EQS. You can get the i7, the Lucid Air. S90, We're now going to have this ES90. Sedan. I wonder if we can be getting an EV90 wagon. So Volvo has their V90, which is their wagon version of the S90. And a wagon would be absolutely perfect. It would be epic. Okay. Small market, but a electric wagon based on the S90 would be amazing. Who doesn't love wagons? But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Otherwise, this is the Out of Spec Podcast. My name is Isaiah, and I will see you guys in the next one.